The Sandbox Video Podcast is brought to you by SmartShift, the global leader in intelligent automation for SAP transformations. Hello, and welcome to the Sandbox Video Podcast. I'm your host, Joyce Kilhaywick, and today I'm joined by Glenn Pinnell, Senior Vice President and Chief Information Officer for Benjamin Moore. Now, as almost everyone knows, Benjamin Moore is one of the world's leading paint, color, and coating brands, offering global consumers and professionals over 3,500 unmatched colors. Their products are available through more than 8,500 retailers in 70 countries. Glenn, our guest today, joined Benjamin Moore in 2016. In his role as CIO, he's responsible for the company's global IT strategy, making sure that it aligns tightly with the organization's business objectives. Prior to joining Benjamin Moore, Glenn was the president of GWP Technology Consulting, and prior to that, he was the CIO at Higher Right. He is a graduate of St. Thomas Aquinas College, where he earned a degree in finance. And Glenn, welcome. Where are you today? Thank you, Joyce. I'm, I'm joining you here from our headquarters in Montvale, New Jersey. Aha! I love New York and New Jersey, and I love, to coin a phrase, I love Benjamin Moore paint. It is the first paint brand I think of when I think of paint. And you have to know that I have hundreds of paint samples and color swatches in my basement. Chantilly Lace OC65 happens to be my favorite white. We have it all over the house. <laughs> I love it. And I uh, thank you for your uh, support and uh, yeah, for loving our product. And you know, my husband's an architect, so he always recommends Benjamin Moore. It's just the way it goes. It has been around for almost 150 years. So right now, take us into your business and its journey. How has this company been able to stay relevant for such a long period of time? I mean, that involves quite a bit of change and in innovation, I would imagine. Yeah, no doubt. Um, just at Benjamin Moore, we, we celebrated our 140th year in business last year. Um, since we were founded in 1883, we've really been committed to manufacturing the best paint in the industry. And it really starts with the employees who are passionate about the brand and are proud to work for uh, the leading manufacturer in the world. We do this by focusing on innovative product and quality innovation that starts in our laboratories. We're also the color authority offering over 3,500 colors that are unmatchable and can only be achieved with Benjamin Moore products. And lastly, we are dedicated to the independent channel and sell our products to neighborhood retailers where expertise, superior service, and community involvement is paramount. Thank you, because I am one of those customers, and I will say, and I was just saying this to your PR person, that Benjamin Moore's website is so easy to navigate. It's so full of suggestions. I get to see what, you know, not just imagine, but also see. So as you might guess, I, along with many other customers, love redesigning my environment with paint. But as the CIO, you're responsible for continually redesigning behind the scenes, specifically the technological environment. So right now, tell us about Benjamin Moore's global IT. What have you done to keep that up to date and to innovate as you go? Yeah, sure. So I started Benjamin Moore um, soon after an ERP upgrade. And, um, you know, like many ERP implementations, you know, it was very challenging. So for the first 18 months, I really needed to focus on that back office that you talked about while continuing, right, to roll out the new manufacturing functionality for our supply chain team. Our business relies on that SAP platform to run. If system is down for any length of time, it has a direct impact on our ability to manufacture, ship, and ultimately bill our retailers. Not good for the team responsible for the platform. It is extremely important that the system is up and running without any interruption. So I'm happy to say that SAP has been a great partner for us and has allowed me to not only focus on the back office operation, but was able to transition to how information technology can empower the front office. Mm. 
Um, so after about 18 to 24 months, I was able to focus on digital transformation, which to me is very exciting. And for us, this meant first changing how we work. So we adopted Agile Safe in our digital products organization, which allowed us to improve time to market for our digital products. Some of our new products were a B2B and a B2C commerce platform, a revamped Benjamin Moore website with a new digital color experience I think you referenced earlier, and an improved CRM experience for our sales team, and a soon to be released color tinting platform for our 8,500 retailers. Modernizing IT for me has all been about expanding our digital portfolio for both the back and front offices. Mm -hmm. So a lot has been written about your work with SAP. Tell us a bit more about how they're helping you with that huge digital transformation journey. There's a lot of moving parts here that need to be centralized. Yeah, no doubt. And as I mentioned earlier, SAP has been a really great partner for us over my eight years at Benjamin Moore. And, and partner really is a key word because we don't treat them as a vendor. We look for their expertise and work on work with them on new capabilities, you know, certainly while continuing our operations. An example of the partnership was at the beginning of COVID. Like many other companies, we started to see our online sales dramatically increase. Unfortunately for us, we were on a very old B2C platform that was unstable and created a terrible customer experience. And the good news is that we had recently gone live on a B2B platform on that SAP Hybris uh, solution. And so I reached out to SAP for the help. And as always, they were ready to jump in and, and help. And within nine weeks, we were able to stand up a new store. We call it Scrappy, right? It was a bit scrappy in nine weeks, but we were able to, to stand up that new store. And uh, that solution is able to scale and it has uh, been a real asset for us as our online orders have, have grown. Really a huge success and example of that strong partnership. Mm -hmm. Well, it's important to be scrappy. you got to stay ahead of the curve. I recently read an ASUG article that talked about your move to the cloud. Tell us what that was like for you and your whole team. What were some of the key challenges there? For example, how did you handle migrating your data, your legacy code, and, and also your business processes? Yeah, sure. You know, it, it was, we really have been a cloud first company for a number of years, but it really didn't take real effect until late 2022. And that, that, that time I was approached by our managed service, uh, service data center provider uh, that they were no longer going to be able to host us and uh, that we needed to move by the end of 2023. So once the shock wore off, and I'll tell you it was a shock, uh, my team and I, we, we, we got together and started planning our move to the cloud, probably you know, 18 months earlier than we wanted to. Um, so we took to uh, you know, our partners, Microsoft, Unisys, SAP, and, and worked with them on, on our journey, right? How are we gonna plan for this journey over to Azure Cloud? Uh, so we started earlier last year and uh, happy to say we successfully completed the migration in, in December. Really, it was complex project. You know, we moved over 400 business critical servers to Azure. And, and really, the, 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 the servers, the data, um, the code came over seamlessly. It really did. Our complexity was about the integrations and interfaces. And, and why that was complex, it's because we they were in place for, for over seven years. And so when you start to bring the servers over, lots of effort there, lots of experience, but those integrations that were you know, put in place many years ago was really the complexity. And, and I, I like to think about you know, the migration. I, I come back with the, the saying, practice makes perfect, right? <laughs> and, and it really is all about that practice. First, we started, in dev, then we went to quality, then mock prod, and then we were ready for the big leagues, right? And we moved uh, everything over during our production cu uh, cut over. And I think, you know, keys for us, having a strong, dedicated internal team mm -hmm. and great partners were, were really key to our success. And, and now that we're there, right? Now that we're in the cloud, we can expect 
you know, business benefits such as cost efficiency, uh, future innovations, you know, global accessibility, enhanced security, and uh, you know, more business process automation. So we're really excited to be where we are. Uh, again, it was a little bit of a shock, but uh, happy, you know, uh, that we're <laughs> over where we are today. And of course, all of this really involves, uh, beyond all of the transformation and the complexity of this migration, is putting yourself in the position of the customer. The customer experience is, of course, at the heart of the digital innovation, which is taking place at Benjamin Moore. So tell us about how your team's work is helping to make the customer experience better. Yeah, customer centricity is a focus for the entire organization, right? And in our IT mission at Benjamin Moore, it states, you know, to deliver and support um, customer centric business solutions and technology that enable the business uh, strategy at Benjamin Moore. So it's in our DNA. Customer centricity really is in our DNA. And we start everything we do with the customer. And we, we believe that starting with the customer, you know, will have the biggest impact on the ultimate experience. So I'll give you an example. Example is our new ColorX tinting platform. Um, we are in the process of developing, um, and we'll be rolling it out, you know, uh, first to a pilot group in the summer and larger scale next year. And we have regular feedback sessions with group of retailers and we incorporate, right, everything, all that feedback into next and future releases. So we demonstrate what we've done, we talk about the going forward, and we work together. So it's a continuous feedback loop, really, really aimed at improving that customer experience. And, you know, some of the things those customers can benefit from that project is, you know, new math engine, which helps us with our recipe for color, right? a better user interface, more search capabilities, you know, all with that customer in mind. I have to say that I love the way the website works. I love all of the suggestions for combining paint colors. If I don't have an idea, Benjamin Moore can supply that. So really it's very aesthetically pleasing. It works for me. It certainly helps the consumer. I, I'm sold. <laughs> What's next for <laughs> Benjamin Moore's IT strategy, though? Paint us, paint us a picture, if you will, Glenn. What's on the horizon? I love what you did there, Joyce. That was, uh, that was great. <laughs> um, you know, really, what, what's in the future for, for us, like many other companies, is generative AI, right? Generative AI has produced so much interest over the last several months. You know, companies like ours, we're, we're, we're scrambling a bit to establish our strategy in this area and, and really explore ways we can leverage that new new technology. Again, all that aimed at that customer experience. And so our current strategy is about uh, relying on um, what we call everyday AI, right? Everyday AI is really about leveraging what our partners like SAP or, or Microsoft are building into their products that we use each and every day. So that's a way that we can get our, you know, into the game here, so to speak, without having huge investments. But that said, right, we are have our, our, our eyes on, you know, leveraging what I'll call disruptive AI, right? How can we disrupt the, the, the industry or create a customer experience using large language models or you know generative AI to have that you know really guided great customer experience. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not going to say we have it all figured out yet, but we're optimistic, and it's an exciting time you know to be at Benjamin Moore, you know having a seat at the table with the leadership team, and then focusing on improving the customer experience. It's just fantastic. You know, and as you mentioned uh, AI, I'm thinking, yes, you, you have it clearly in your sights that AI is, is a tool. It's a tool to be worked with, nothing that we need to be incredibly afraid of, which everyone's talking about now. So I have a question, Glenn, as we, as we conclude, that's a little bit off script. Do you have a favorite Benjamin Moore color? Absolutely. <laughs> but it changes from time to time because we have 3,500 colors. Right now, I'll have to go with our 2024 color of the year, Blue Nova. I think it's fantastic. 
And if you have a chance, I think you'd love it in your house. Thank you. I will take that as an inside tip and uh, tell you, Glenn, that it has really been an absolute pleasure speaking with you today. I really do love Benjamin Moore. Thank you so much. Thank you. The Sandbox Video Podcast was brought to you by SmartShift, the global leader in intelligent automation for SAP transformations.